Well, good morning and welcome to our service uh, of the Word on this Pentecost Sunday. Very warm welcome to you if you're joining us for the first time or if you have, or you, you've come back after a time away. It's really good to have you with us on this bright, sunny public holiday weekend as we uh, look forward to more fine weather and uh, as we remember uh, to enjoy ourselves within the, the lockdown restrictions that are placed upon us. It's really good to have you. If you're, if you're new to us, uh, my name's Tim Wright and I'm the Dean of Kildare. And if you want to... Uh, uh, contact me. You can contact me at dean at anglican dot uh, sorry dean at Angl- uh, kildare dot anglican dot or dean at kildare dot anglican dot or or you can follow us on this channel, which is Tim Wright, cop, comma Dean of Kildare. So it's really good to have you with us, and especially it's a warm welcome on this Pentecost Sunday to the church family within the group, uh, the Kildare and Newbridge group. So very warm welcome to you. We're celebrating today Pentecost. The birthday of the church and so uh, in our all age services in Newbridge every month we remember birthdays and we sing happy birthday to those that have had a birthday and we share a chocolate and then we sing happy birthday to you to Jesus be true the Lord bless and keep you your whole life through we sing a, a prayer for the people whose birthdays it is and today's the birthday of the church so I thought we could start by by singing happy birthday to the church so we'll just sing the second verse Happy birthday to you, to Jesus be true. The Lord bless and keep you your whole life through. And that's what we think for our church family. Our call to worship this morning is taken from Psalm 133, the first verse. One of the songs of a sense that we, we thought about so much in our church services last summer. How good and pleasant it is, says David. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. We're here uh, on this Easter, uh, this Pentecost Sunday, the birthday of the church, to praise God uh, together. And we'll start our time together by some prayers of confession as we remember before God uh, the, uh, the truths of our lives, that we fail to live up to all that God has for us. The Spirit of the Lord, we're told, fills the world and knows our every word and deed. And so at the beginning of this day, let us open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Once again, we'll use a Kiri form of the confession. The response to Lord have mercy is Lord have mercy. And the response to Christ have mercy is Christ have mercy. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. Christ, have mercy. You make one by your spirit, the torn and the divided. Lord, have mercy. And so may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, citizens and brothers, the night has passed and the day lies open before us, so let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with you, love, on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Today is Pentecost, the birthday of the church, and so the collect or special prayer for today is is about Pentecost, and we'll hear about some of the themes in the collect in our reading in just a few moments. So let's pray together the collect for today for Pentecost. So Almighty God, who on the day of Pentecost sent your Holy Spirit to the apostles with the wind from heaven and in tongues of flame, filling them with joy and boldness to preach the gospel. By the the power of the same spirit, strengthen us to witness to your truth and to draw everyone to the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
So I said our Bible reading is taken from Acts chapter 2. It's beginning at verse 1 and it tells us the events of the first day of Pentecost. Now Pentecost, the name itself, comes from 50. It's 50 days from Passover uh, to now. It's 50 days from Easter to now. Pentecost was an Old Testament festival. The Old Testament people of God would have celebrated Pentecost 50 days after they'd remembered the Passover. At the Passover, they remembered God leading them out of Egypt uh, into the desert. And at Pentecost, they remembered two things. The first thing they remembered was God giving them the law so so that God uh, no longer committed himself to being with them, the covenant God who loved them. And he gave them his law and promised that he would never leave them or forsake them. So the first thing they remembered was the giving of the law. The second thing they remembered was the barley harvest, the first harvest of the year. And so they would come to Jerusalem, they would come to the temple, and they would give thanks to God for the harvest, God's gracious provision to them, but would also give thanks to God for his giving of the law, his commitment to being in community with them, of being their God as they would be his people. And for Christians, 40 days after Jesus' death and resurrection, we remembered his ascension to heaven 40 days later. And then 10 days later, we remember the pouring out of the spirit upon the church, the birthday of the church on that special day. And Acts chapter two, right at the beginning, tells us what happened that first Pentecost in the Christian era. So Acts chapter two, beginning at the first verse. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews, from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, Residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene. Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed. They asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So what can we take from this passage, this familiar passage? And yet, as I read this familiar passage, a passage I've probably spoken on every one of my 30 odd years in ordained ministry, something new struck me. And isn't that just amazing, the way that God's word comes to us afresh every time and how we glean new insights from it as we get familiar with it and God speaks to us. It's a living and active word that God uses to talk to us. And the thing that struck me most as I was thinking about this was that first phrase that the disciples, the apostles were together because we live in this lockdown time and being together is something that we can't do. We long for the time when we can come back into our church buildings and when we can worship together. We've realised that we can do most of what we do in church on our own. We can say our prayers, we can read our Bibles, we can confess our faith, we can, most of what we do, we can do on our own. And the challenge for us is, how do we do that? We will be able to continue doing that. Well, we want to continue doing that. But the thing we can't do is gather together with our sisters and brothers, with other Christians to encourage each other, to build ourselves up. And there they were on that first day, that Pentecost day, together. And we rightly criticised Thomas for being absent that day. 
and Jesus coming again a week later. But there they were together. What does it mean for us to come together? How important is it for us to come together? How much are we longing for that time when we can be that city on the hill, that beacon, that light in our community as we gather together as Christians to encourage one another in our faith, to pray for each other, to support each other and to be with each other. For that's what the disciples were that day. They were together. They were in community. And one of the themes of uh, Pentecost in that first day was God would be with his people. I will be your God and you will be my people. That great covenantal promise at the heart of our faith. And that thought my mind back to when other times the church might have struggled to be together. And my mind went back to the confessing church in Germany uh, during the rise of the Nazi government, when the Nazi government tried to control everything in society, including the churches. And, and a group of Christians led by Dietrich Bonhoeffer uh, formed what was called the confessing church. They went into exile. They went into their own and they had to work out what it meant to be a church that couldn't meet together, that the, that the, you know, the government of that day didn't want him. And Bonifer wrote a book called Life Together because for him that was the important thing that was missing and how they could be together. And he did part of it was what they could do when they met and part of it what they could do when they didn't met, when they were on their own. And the bits on their own are the things we've been majoring on and thinking about and trying to keep our spiritual lives about that daily rhythm of private prayer, of spending some time quietly alone with, with God of uh, maybe using a journal to make notes so that we can follow uh, where God has been leading us to write down the things that we are learning. Praying for each other, maybe using an app like Prayer Mate or, or making prayer lists so that we can remember to pray for our church leaders, for Bishop Pat, uh, for uh, our congregational leaders, the members of the Select Vestry, members of our church family. And so we think about how we might do those things but he also talks about how we do things together, the importance of being and of looking forward to those times. Sisters and brothers, we look forward to it. And so the first thing that struck me was that we should not expect this to be the new normal, but we should look forward to the time when we can meet together. And then there's the second thing about communication. On the Mount Sinai, Moses received the law. God spoke and Moses received the law. At Pentecost, God's, God made himself real in a very new and, and different way. He spoke to his people. He spoke in experiences and he spoke in words. The experiences were like the sound of the wind and, and the sight of uh, the flames. The room was filled with wind uh, and, and it sounded like it had come from anywhere. And, and the thing about wind is that you just don't know where it's coming from. Unless you've got a degree in weather, you won't really know much about the wind. And we get buffeted and blown about by it. And we're not quite sure what's happening. Have you ever watched those eddies uh, in the garden, catching up the leaves and spinning them around? That's the sort of thing. We don't know where the wind is blowing. And that reminds us that God's spirit blows wherever God's spirit wants it. And, and the flames came in and they settled on the individuals. It settled on individual people and that reminds us that God is interested in each one of us he doesn't just think about a group a family a church he knows Tim and he knows Patience he knows Alma and he knows Anna he knows Clive and he knows Jesse and he knows Liz and he knows all of us Violet and Alan and he wants each one of us to know him and he said by his spirit he comes to each one of us individually so that we might know him ourselves but it's the words I want to quick on things and, and, and time is running on. I hopefully uh, we can get through. But without the words, the experiences made no sense. And so everybody started speaking. And the amazing thing about Pentecost was that they spoke in a way that everybody there that could understand. There, if you count them up, there are 15 different groups. Some of them are to the east out into Iraq and out that way. Some of them to the north, uh, up into uh, Syria and Turkey and round into Greece. Some of them are to the west, the North Africa, you know, Egypt and Libya and out that way. And of course, there's the mention of Rome, the center of the empire. In other words, 
People from all over the world were in Jerusalem at Pentecost and they heard the good news about Jesus. I've sat here in our hall because I want to draw your attention to this picture here. This picture I picked up in Cyprus when I was a, a, a chaplain in Cyprus. And I was a member of the Anglican Synod for the Diocese of Cyprus and the Gulf. And the church in Kuwait produced these to raise funds. This is the Lord's Prayer in Arabic. And it reminds me, as I walk through my front door every day, of the universal nature of the church, that God came at Pentecost and he spoke to people throughout the nations and how important that is for us to, to take the good news to others. Just as the good news was brought to us in the days of Patrick and of Bridget, so we must be ready to share the good news in a way that people of every nation and tongue can understand. Pentecost reminds us of communication and community. It reminds us that we all belong together and it reminds us that God wants to talk to us and he wants to have an individual relationship with us. Some people have heard that mocked and we know still there are people that mock. Some people who heard it responded. And later on, we'll see how lives were changed as people came into an encounter with the living God. And my prayer for you, this Pentecost, this birthday of the church, is that you're not one who mocks, but you're one who wants to know more and wants to come to a living encounter with Jesus through his spirit. Once again, as the, one of the high days of the church, I'm going to say the creed. And you can join in with me uh, with that if you know it. If not, let's listen and reflect upon the words and what it says about Pentecost and about the coming of the Spirit. This is the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again to judge in the, li the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The response in our prayers of intercession this morning, as we think about God's gifts to us at Pentecost, is when I say come to bless us, the response is and fill us with your spirit and fill us with your spirit. So we pray that God's Holy Spirit may direct our lives, saying, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. Paul tells us in Galatians that the fruit of the spirit is love, joy and peace. Father, we know that your world needs love and harmony. Our news has reminded us of racial tensions in America of violence on our streets and of a world in turmoil. Come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. The fruit of the spirit is patience, kindness and goodness. Father, we know that our world is starved of love and care. And so we pray for those whom this is a difficult time those who are suffering and ill, those who are exhausted by the work they've been called upon to do, our essential workers, those for whom lockdown has been a difficult experience, either through isolation and loneliness or domestic uh, abuse and turmoil, those who are missing their friends, their family and their neighbours. Come to bless us. The fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Father, we know that our world is short of truth and justice. And so we pray for our leaders of our nations, for our government, for those responsible for our civic administration, 
for our defence forces and for the guards, for all those who seek to build up our common life. Come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. Send us out in Jesus' power to live and work to your praise and glory through him to whom we belong, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let's sum up our prayers and praises as we join together with Christians throughout the ages and throughout the world as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And as we think about the disciples being together and as we long to be together, let us pray for each other in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And so we're coming to the end of our short time of together, a great time when we thought about the birthday of the church we prayed that we might be true, that we might know what it is to be together in community, that we may know what it is uh, to be able to tell what God has done, to communicate the good news. Two pieces of uh, parish notices before I go. Uh, this morning at 11 o'clock on RTE, there will be the Irish Blessing, which has been is a ad hoc choir who've come together at home and have produced an Irish Blessing. At 11 o'clock on RTE, I encourage you to, to look at that. Uh, org organised by Philip McKinley and a few others uh, and uh, you'll enjoy that and be blessed by it I'm sure so 11 o'clock on RTE this morning the second thing is that next Sunday is Trinity Sunday and Bishop Pat has invited us to a diocesan service and so a diocesan service is being put together with various contributions from uh, members of the church across our united diocese of, of Meath and Kildare We've all been asked to suggest a name and Jessie said she would do it. So we're really looking forward to seeing Jessie doing it for us uh, and representing us on this. And Eugene from Dunboyne will be contacting people in the next couple of days. So there won't be a service here, but I will. the service will be on YouTube. And I will make sure that you get the link to our diocesan service. And I will make sure that uh, if I will try and put it onto this channel as well so that people can see it. But we're going to have a diocesan service. And isn't that great? On Trinity Sunday. Uh, when we come together to proclaim our faith, that we can gather together with our Christians across these two dioceses. So that's next Sunday. And so I look forward to being with you in two Sundays time uh, as we start thinking what we're going to do during the remainder of this summer, where we might study together. But now comes the time. Thank you all for, for joining us. It's really good to see so many people engaging. If you want to subscribe to the channel, please do. We will send out links. If you want to contact me, I'll be around for about 10 minutes afterwards just to talk about it uh, before I go for breakfast myself. And there's pancakes we know at the Coles. If you can get there, be there quickly. Uh, but otherwise, enjoy the bank holiday weekends and enjoy the weather. And so may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit who builds community and communicates the faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>